in this study today, I want to focus uh, on assurance and acceptance and how important it is, as I've mentioned on a number of occasions, to read Holy Scripture and to know our relationship with the Lord, that we have assurance and acceptance. And it's assurance and acceptance not only now in our journey, but eternity. It's forever. There are two passages and we've looked at them and they are so simple. One is the the whole counsel of God in one verse, John 3.16. And yes, the second one is Ephesians 3, 16 and following. Let me read to you Ephesians 3.16 and following where Paul the Apostle says, I pray out of the Holy Spirit's glorious riches. And the fact here is that it's the Father's and Jesus' acceptance we're talking about. The fact that he loves us. And it's agape, self-sacrificial love. Jesus paid the ultimate price because he loved us so much. We are assured and accepted. I pray that out of his glorious riches that you and I may be strengthened with power. Strengthened with power. He gives us strength and power it's a sign of his assurance and acceptance of us that through his Holy Spirit in our inner being assured and accepted that being grounded and established in love and that's agapo, agape that we may grasp And that word grasp, that is to understand the fact that that we have been accepted and we are assured of everything that Jesus has promised. All God's promises are yes in Jesus. I think that's 2 Corinthians 1.20. All God's promises are yes in Jesus. That we may understand our assurance and acceptance that being grounded and established in love that we may know and understand the width and length and height and depth of the love of God and to know him and be filled to the full to the fullness of God God's assurance an acceptance. To assure means to tell or, or to tell with confidence that it will happen. Assurance is, is a guarantee. It's to declare that this is going to happen and it will happen. Acceptance is that true agreement that there is consent to receive into a relationship to accept the relationship, a true agreement of it, that there is consent, that we agree to receive into that relationship. And it, it's in relation to Jesus now. Well, I hope, brothers and sisters, that you've accepted what Jesus has offered. It's free the free unmerited favour of our Lord Jesus. That's his grace. (coughs) And it's forever. When we believe, therefore, we have assurance and acceptance. And who tells us? Who assures us? Who gives us that guarantee? 
how do we know? How do we know that this assurance is, is true, that it is right? Well, God in Holy Scripture and the Bible tells us. In John chapter 20, verse 31, which we've looked at a number of times, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. You are accepted and assured that there is life in his name when you believe. And we remember in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the Logos. Verse 3, through him all things were made. In him, that is Jesus, we have life. And that life is the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Remember in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said, you know, in the world you're going to have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And in John 1.11, Jesus came to his own, but his own did not receive him. And remember when we were doing the studies of Mark, in Mark chapter 3 verse 6, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were all ready to kill him. Only up to chapter 3 in the truth about him coming. Yet to all who received him, he gave the right. He gave the right to become children of God. And verse 12 again. Yet to all who received him and believed in his name, he gave the right to become children, not creatures, but children of God. It's so important to understand that, brothers and sisters. The truth that when we believe in Jesus, we are God's children. It's a relationship that we have in God's personal family. It's our position in the family. And God is our Father. And Jesus is our brother. Jesus is our brother. And you remember that we've said last time that in Revelation 3.20, he said that, you know, I knock on the door. Anyone who, who opens the door, I'll come in. And I'll give you the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat with my father on his throne. And all I can say to that is, wow, wow, to sit with Jesus in glory on his throne, to sit with our brother on his throne. Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, who made the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1.1. And that Ephesians 1 truth of our assurance and our acceptance where it says Paul writes he says praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Jesus that he chose us in him how's that for acceptance and assurance he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and to be adopted, assured and accepted and adopted as sons and daughters through Jesus, through what Jesus has done, the success of his mission and ministry, going to the cross as the atoning, atoning sacrifice for our sins and that we have redemption through his blood on that cross and forgiveness of sins. And we have God's assurance and acceptance of this truth now and eternally when we simply believe in Jesus, all that he has done. 
It's that wonderful truth in Romans chapter 3 verse 21 where Paul says the faith of Jesus, the faith in Jesus. That wonderful truth. The simply believing in him. And God's assurance tells us this. He tells us this in that truth in John 14 verse 6. And I I love it. I'm going to I'm going to read it now, and I'm not reading. It's out of my memory. Please be encouraged to to, to read scripture and can put it in your memories. I, I have trouble reading it because I'm legally blind and 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 I'm reading from memory. John fourteen one to six, where Jesus said, "Do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God. Trust in me." In my Father's house are many rooms. If it would not, so would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And I have gone to prepare a place for you. And and I'm going to come and take you to be where I am. And Thomas, remember Thomas said, you know, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And we, brothers and sisters, have the assurance when we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that we have a room with him. For he is the way, the truth and the life. And we have come to the Father through him. Jesus tells us, that we will be with him now and forever. And we see that in John 11, 25 onwards, where Jesus said, and it's one of his wonderful I am statements, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Say that again. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Believing this truth is our assurance and our acceptance. And that we are friends, not more than friends. We are brothers and sisters with Jesus. And it's more than that, as I've said. Jesus, brothers and sisters, friends of Jesus. Not not filio friends, as Peter was saying in that answer, you know, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I filio you. You're just a friend. No, it's more than that. It's the love of the self-sacrificial love that we do anything for Jesus. A wonderful assurance and acceptance. And we see it in John 15, 15, where Jesus said, I call you friends, for everything I learned from my Father I have made known to you. And Jesus did this. He loves you. And it's agape, agapo. He loves you. And, and why? Because he knows that you love him. You truly love him. For all that he has done for you. And for all that he is doing for you. All that he has prepared in advance for you to do. And given you his Holy Spirit to guide you in doing it. And again, why, why? Why is this so? Well, I'm going to read you John chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. Do you know, that's, that is the authority that Jesus got from the Father. You know, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, where he says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Who gave it to him? The Father gave it to him. And the, the, the scripture, the scripture, 
that proves this is John 15 verses 9 onwards. And this is it. Jesus said, quote, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain or abide in my love. If you obey my Father's commands, you will remain or abide in my love. I have told you this, I have told you this, so my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. He says, if I, if you obey my commands, and that is the authority that he got because he's always obeyed his father's commands. We are justified, we are declared righteous in Jesus. And Paul, the wonderful apostle Paul says in Romans 5.1, Therefore, since we have been justified, in other words, just as if we didn't do it, just as if we had not sinned, because Jesus covers our sins. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through Jesus. Peace. That wonderful truth that we have from Paul also in Philippians 4, 4 onwards, where he says, Rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, because we are... We have assurance and acceptance. Rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Do not be anxious, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests to God and the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts in the knowledge of Jesus. In the knowledge of Jesus wonderful assurance and acceptance in knowing our, our position in Jesus and again I'm going to I'm, I want I want to express that wonderful love and care from that John 14 1 to 6 actually I'll read John 14 1 to 9 from memory that is on the Thursday before Good Friday when Jesus went to the cross for you and me to save us, to show that he, he, was, he rose on, the, on, on that third day and he is with the Father. John 14, 1-9 Do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms and I'm going to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And I will come. And we know he's going to come back. That's that 1 Thessalonians 4 and Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 6. And it's in that book that I've mentioned on a number of occasions. That wonderful book that I've, I, I had joy in writing. Blessed are those in the first resurrection on my PDF free copy padreaustralia.com p-a-d-r-e-a-u-s-t-r-a-l-i-a dot com free PDF copy uh, and uh, it's in that book from page 254 onwards the truth that I'm talking about now John 14 1 to 9 do not let your hearts be troubled Trust in God and trust in me, Jesus said. Trust in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I go to repair a place for you, I will come and take you to be where I am. And he'll come in the clouds to do that, unless we're with him at the end of our life and stand before him in our last breath. Prepare a place for you to take you to where I am. And then Thomas said, But Lord, where are you going? We don't know the way. 
And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, and Philip says, Lord, when are you going to show us the Father? And Jesus said, Have you been with me so long, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And every time I think of that wonderful truth, I remember John 6 verse 40. Anyone who looks to the Son and believes in him has eternal life. And that is, when we do that, we have a full assurance of faith and total acceptance. And we know, we know that we're going to be with Jesus forever. What a joy, you know, when we think of the wonderful times we're having in this wonderful life now. But at the end of our wonderful life, that we will see Jesus face to face. And, and he's going to say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the room I've prepared for you. This is God's wonderful assurance and acceptance. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.